chapter 17, 6 to 14. And so we're going to continue our study in the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And to my left, here are the different relationships as we study the word of God within the sentence. The sentences, let's be looking for these relationships here. Uh, let's look at and consider how we can describe the entire sentence. Let's look at relationships between sentences to my far left. And then look at all these analyses that we can do. We can do background studies. We can make observations. We can ask questions. And we can always be considering the genre. And so um, let's use these tools to help us to better understand the word of God, not for our pride, but for our understanding and the transformation of our heart. The word of the Lord, continuing from the... The description of the great prostitute from um, the first part of chapter 17. And when I saw her, the great prostitute, I marveled greatly. The angel said to me, why do you marvel? I tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast with seven heads and ten horns that, ca ten horns that carries her. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go on to destruction. And the earth dwellers on earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will marvel and to see the beast, because it was and is not and is to come. This calls for a mind of wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the, mount, the woman is seated. They are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain for a little while. As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven, and it goes on to destruction. The ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power. They are to receive authority as kings for one hour. Together with the beast, these are of one mind, and they hand over the power and authority to the beast. They will make war on the lamb, and the lamb will conquer them, for he is the Lord of lords and king of kings. And those who are with him are called faithful and chosen. Faithful and chosen. Okay, <laughs> so deep, so powerful, incredibly powerful. Let's look at the text where I'm pulling this up and just, um, what are your questions? What are your observations? Let's look at verse six and seven while I bring this up here. What are your reflections on the reading? Incredibly powerful passage. So what I noticed first here is that uh, this is a time reference when I saw her. And so the her, looking at the previous context, the her refers to the, to the great prostitute. And I'll ask a question. Who is the great prostitute from last week? There were several ways we could identify her. Um, you could use either one. I'm, I'll look for several. How do we define the, the great prostitute from last week? It's the Babylon. Okay, yeah. So number one, we can, we can de she's defined as Babylon the Great. Well, how else do we define her? Kingdom of Satan. Okay, great. So, so Babylon represents... I guess that's ba Babylon, but yeah. Yeah, so Babylon represents the kingdom of Satan. And so that's the ultimate... So within the kingdom of Satan, within Babylon, what was the contrast? Babylon was contrasted with what other great city? Jerusalem, excellent. So let's just fix this here first. And then, so this is, this is contrasted with Jerusalem. And, and so this is, uh, so how do we, if we're looking at, what, is, what does Jerusalem represent? It's more than just a city. What does it represent? Like it's identified with Christ, right? It's 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 Christ's chosen city. But what's the other word? It's the famous word from Augustine, the famous book, the city of God, right? The city of God. <laughs> um, it's also called the heavenly city. And so we could say this is so so Babylon is also the kingdom of Satan, or it's 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 the city, the city that represents the power of 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 Satan. And so all this can also be described as the, the world system. We talked about that, that 
Babylon as a country, as a city, because of its, its rebellion against God, its rebellion against good and its corruption and pride, it became a type in the same way that Jerusalem represents the city of God. It became a type um, that represents um, the world system, th th those aligned with the kingdom of Satan. So the big takeaway here is that is that a very little literal reading of Revelation, people will claim that Babylon's coming back <laughs> in a very literal reading. But here, if we recognize the symbolism, we just recognize that it's the ongoing world system and it's, it's always against God, okay? Everyone tracking there with me? Any questions or, or feedback? Okay, so then look, looking down here, look at, look at what John does here. So uh, this is so interesting. So this is the, the eye is still John. So this is John the apostle, the writer. And look at this word here. How can we translate this word? I marveled greatly. Maybe you can look at a cross-reference. NIV says astonished. Okay, so astonished is possible. What else? Anything else? Amazed. Yeah, so amazed, yeah. Now, there's, there is another, so that's good as well. And there's another word that's, I think, even stronger and fits, because this is also going to be an action of other people in this context. So astonished, amazed. Let's do a quick uh, word study here. So I have before us, if you can see to the left, this is the uh, Step Bible, and so incredibly powerful um, Bible program. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be trying to using this to use this more and more in our class and and for our small group here. Uh, we're using this in our classes for the Cloud Seminary, but using this in the small group. So let me look here at. I'm gonna click on this word marvel. Look down here though. You could have wonder or marvel. To marvel at is like to, to maybe we could say to stare, right? To stare. And I don't want to say that John is sinning, but coming down here to honor, admire, or worship. Okay, so I'm not saying that John is, is worshiping, but it could be a thing of just, there, there's a point where something goes from like, amazement to like admiration, right? So I'm not trying to in, in, impugn motives here with John, but, but, th but this word is incredibly powerfully used. And then it's going to be reused later on um, by, by those that are opposed. But let's think about this word admire. What type of context could you see this occurring in our own day um, to, to maybe really set the context? Am I making sense? My, my, I guess my question is, do we ever marvel greatly at something today? I guess is my question. Think about your own life when, when that happened. Yeah, with a lot of things. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and, it's, and, and there's, a, there's a boundary between a, uh, being amazed at something and then starting to admire it, correct? There's, there's, there's a boundary there. So I don't want to say that the meaning is admire in a sinful sense, although I think it's on the way. You know, you, you know, could have... Go ahead. There's a thin line between admire and to idolize. Yeah, yeah. Admire and covet. Yeah. Yeah, to idolize. I like the word idolize. This is a thin line. And I think that the image I have here is that it's, it's like the woman could be very beautiful. And so it's almost like mesmerizing for John. He's almost like caught in, in, a, like in a trance, like, wow, this woman is, is because there is that draw from the world, right? There is that draw from the world if we're looking at the, the, the symbolism. But you could see a very, like, like seeing a very beautiful car and you're just, you're, you're focused, right? We'll, we'll see Carmichael is watching her, her iPad and she just becomes locked in and amazing. Like you, you can't distract her, right? Our dog, Bon Bon. It's like, she sees a squirrel and it's like, you cannot distract that dog. She, she is amazed at that squirrel. She's fo focused. <laughs> yeah, focused, focused. That's really good. That's funny. So, so look at this here. Look at the, so this is John's, so let's write this down here. This is John's action. And then look at the, look at the response by the angel. Look at this response here. The angel said to me, 
So he, he asked, the angel asked a question. Why do you marvel? Right? So this is a, this is a question. Why, 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 why are you amazed? Right? And then he says, he says this. I will tell you the mystery of the woman. So this is going to be a, a, a revealing, right? A revelation. So he's going to tell John the mystery with reference to the mystery with reference to the woman and with reference to with reference to the woman and also to the beast with the seven horns and the, the, with the seven heads and the 10 horns, right? So this is specifically the beast that's carrying her. So he's going to tell this. So there's going to be two, there's going to be two mysteries that are probably going to be revealed, right? The mystery with reference to the woman and the mystery with reference to the beast. And maybe they're the same, maybe they're interconnected. Okay. Everyone tracking there with me? So we have here clear symbolism here, right? This is clear sim symbolism concerning the, the prostitute. The beast is symbol symbolizing as coming from, from Satan, and it's heavily symbolic. And then look at this. It has the beast has seven heads and ten horns, right? So... Look at this description here. <laughs> seven heads and ten horns. Okay. Is it uh, ten horns per head? And it could be it could be ten horns on the back, right? It could be ten horns on the back, right? We don't know. I would say that I would say this is a cumulative. So there's just seven heads and there's ten horns, wherever the horns are. I, I think so. What we can say here for sure, big time symbolism going on. I mean, huge, right? And we're gonna see what he says here. Look at look at what the description of the beast is. By okay. the way, Tim, go ahead. The response of the angel is that a rebuke? Did the angel rebuke the John? I think, I think, I think he, I think this. So this is, yeah. So I think, I think that this is a. I, I like your comment, and I think that this is a, this is a, a indirect rebuke. <laughs> like it's like why are you staring stop yeah. staring i know no i think that's exactly what's happening and it's almost like a like a mesmerize like a mesmerizing and we're going to see why there's the rebuke and I, I think the text is going to confirm that pastor so that's an excellent observation there seems to be this indirect like a question like why are you staring and the implication is stop staring right look at the description so we have here the beast look at the description of the beast okay the beast, the beast is this. This is the description. The beast was, so that we're, we're describing right here state. And when I'm saying state, this, is, this, this could be existence, okay? So think about a parallel. We've been talking about how there's a counterfeit going on, right? So notice here, the beast that you saw was, is not so that's the second one so this is past this is present and is about to rise from the bottomless pit so where have we seen the bottomless pit before anyone R wasn't this from the trumpets the bold trumpets when when Apollyon, Apollyon comes out. So we have we have a, a cross reference here. Let's go to the bottomless pit here. So this is chapter nine, verse one. So we have it. We have it right here. Chapter nine, verse one. So I'm going to click on that here, and we've got it right here. The fifth, the fifth trumpet. So this is the fifth trumpet, and let me get broader context. So uh, this is the fifth angel who blew the trumpet. I saw a star fallen from heaven. So this is a star that's fallen from heaven. So we talked about this po possibly being Satan. He opens the, sha the shaft, the bottom of the, he has a key, the trumpet. This is the fifth trumpet, the fifth trumpet. This is um, the, 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 the star releases 
demonic hordes. So thinking here now, the beast was, is not, and is to, about to rise from the bottomless pit. And then look at, look at the final conclusion here, to go on to destruction. So this is a sad state. Like it's just, it was in existence. It was not. It's about to rise and to go on to destruction. Now, where have we seen was something very similar, not the same. There's a, there's a contrast here. Similar but different. Where have we seen was, is not, and, and, and is about to rise? Where have we seen this before? Yeah, so, so in the scripture, Jesus and, and the Father are was, who is, who was, who is, and is to come. And I think the other reference is like he, the one who is, who was, and is to come as well. So let's go, let's go see if there's a parallel passage here. Revelation 9. There's the, there's the, there's the Abaddon, Apollyon. I was right. Come on, man. I'm struggling here. Yeah, that's it. Man, I messed. I was right. I knew I was right. Hey, let's add this here. So this is Apollyon. There we go. Okay. Um, but I'm looking at uh, the one who it was and is and is to come. So let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation, Revelation 1, 1, 9. Okay, uh, 1, 8. I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who, who is and who was and who is to come. And so this describes the self-existence of the Trinitarian God. Here, the accent is on the Lord God as in Jesus Christ. We, you can watch a video that we discussed that in the past. But so here we have, we have here what's going on to the right. We have this counterfeit going on, okay? We have a counterfeit that's going on here, a, 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 a parallel, a, um, parallelism going on here. But it's a, it's a counterfeit. Okay. And so the beast, the beast existed in the past is not, it's destroyed. And then it is to come. It's, it's, it is to rise. And we also saw that with the dragon and the other beast as well. And so what I want to say here is that there does seem to be this, uh, because of the was, is not, and is about to rise. And because of the reference to, to the drag, the, the beast from the dragon as well. Um, it talks about was, is not and is to come. So, so at least we know here that there is this beast. The beast was, is not, and is about to rise. The dwellers on the earth. Look at the dwellers on the earth here. What are the dwellers on the earth going to do? These are for sure. These are the, the actors. They're identified with the earth, not with the, the lamb. But look at how they're described. What's striking about their description? whose names have not been written in the book of life. So their names are not, the, their names are not written. Okay. So this is the object. This is the, the action. Who's the actor here? Who's the actor? Who's the actor? We're just looking at, we're looking at this relative clause who is the actor in this relative clause the one doing the action so the, so the action is here have not been written so who's writing who's writing their names in the book of life just to be clear god the father and it's through the means of christ okay christ is the the means but notice here look look so the action is, has not been written. The object is the book of life. But look at the time reference. Many people will, 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 will think about us being written in God's book when we have faith or when we finally ultimately reject him. But it seems here that they have not been written, whereas others have, from the foundation of the world. So let's look at a parallel passage before we come back and, and pick up here. Let's look at a parallel passage here. So um, let's zoom let's zoom in here. So we have um, 
the book of life. So let's go to 3.5. So 3.5 is the parallel passage. The one who conquers will be clothed, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. So clearly here, it's Jesus who is, would remove the name, right? Jesus would be the one that would remove the name. And then over here, the time reference begins before the foundation, as if other names were written in the foundations. Everyone tracking there with what I'm saying? Very significant. Um, and we'll go to another passage to, to parallel this. Look at the other, so, so these people are not written, and then look down here. Look at, look at how the, the believers are described. So we're just hopping down here. Those who are with, this is association, those who are with, with the Lamb are called, their description is chosen and faithful. So this describes the, the act of God, right? God chooses, and this here is called um, uh, their activity. They are faithful, their activity, okay? And this is parallel, right? This is parallel with another passage, Ephesians 1.3. So looking at before the foundation or at the foundation of the world and this idea of being chosen. And so blessed be the God and father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be blameless and holy before him. And so what I'm trying to get at is that we're not minimizing the call to be faithful for us to be faithful. But we are emphasizing the act of God, the, the, the sovereignty of God here, um, uh, his work in our lives. And, and noticing here that the dwellers on the earth, their names have not been written. And the time for the writing is at the time of the choosing, right? So that's what I'm trying to get at. The time of the writing is the time of the choosing. And in, in the positive sense, those are the names who are written are at the foundation of the world. So just think about that, um, meditate upon that. But it is, but the point here that why would, like, why would, what, what is the point of this? Why, why would this be mentioned here? And I do think that what's being emphasized, like of all the things he could have said, they're unrepentant, the sinners, all these different things. Why, why draw attention to the name, the names who have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Like why, like why would John bring that up? And, and, and um, well, I'll ask the question, why do you think he would bring that up? I, I think that whatever else revelation is emphasizing that everything that's happening is under the control, the sovereign control of God. And I do think that in this situation here, he's again, drawing our attention to, to the sovereignty of God, that God, God is in control God is the one that does these actions here. And so maybe it's hard to receive, but it's something that, that we can actually rest in because it's not up to us. We don't have to worry about that. Our job is to, is to be faithful. Our job is to be faithful and the rest we can, we can leave it, leave it to him looking here. Um, uh, continue on here. So these people, they, and this comes to pastor, pastor's point, they marvel, they marvel to see the beast. So they definitely hear this action is one of, of admiration or worship. And that word has that sense there. So there is definitely a word play going on here. There's a word play going on. And so I do, I think that pastor's dead on that the angel was rebuking him. The unbelievers, the, those that are against God, they're, they're desiring to see and to admire the beast. Why are you doing that type thing? And also, by the way, he is, John is in the presence of the Lord, right? He's yeah. in that vision, he's in that trance or whatever 
star siya as, yeah. and yet somehow that temptation of the beauty or the majestic yeah. of the, uh, the prostitute kind of, uh, yeah, in a way took his took his attention from the revelation to this uh, this great prostitute whatsoever. No, you're right. I think you're right. I mean, even in the vision, <laughs> even the vision, he's lusting. He's like on the border, right? It's like, it's, you know, it's, yeah, no, that's a really good point, Pastor. I like that. It's, it's, we can be in the presence of God. We can be being led by the spirit in that moment of, of weakness. Excellent point. Excellent. I think, I think the application there is, uh, you can never really trust yourself. Yeah. You know, even when you think you are, on this high level of spirituality, yeah. the enemy can still penetrate and try to, if you're not careful. Yeah, you can never trust yourself. And so it comes back to the to, to God's work of, 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 of keeping us, the sovereignty of God, if I can piggyback your idea, keeping us in it by his spirit. I think that's that's so that's so important. That's that's a really good, really good observation. Um, excellent. So let's go on here. So look at the reason for the reason for them marveling. Look at the re reason here for the, the marveling that's going on. The reason is that the beast was, is not, and is to come. Do you see that? And so look at this. This is an imitation of God. This is a, this is a, a imitation of God if ever there was one. And so where, whereas we should be worshiping God, these earth dwellers are, are fixated on the beast. Okay. And we don't know who the beast is yet, but we're getting there. Okay. This calls for a mind with wisdom. So this here is a call to action. Okay. And so he's going to give then the revelation of what's going on here, okay? Look at the revelation here, okay? The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman is seated. Watch this here. So the seven heads equal the seven mountains. And the implication is that the people should be able to understand. They should be able to connect. This calls for wisdom. So what's wild is that the seven mountains what, what famous city was on seven hills? Rome is literally built on seven, on seven Ooh. hills. Oh, my word. You keep putting me on the spot. Man, I'm sorry. So this is Rome, okay? We need more people. I know. And so this is a reference to the Roman Empire, all right? There are also seven kings. So the seven heads are also seven kings. My, my mistake here. five of whom have already fallen and one is, and the other is not yet come. Okay. So these are descriptions here. And so people go back and forth to describing who are these Kings referring to um, without going into all those different debates. Cause at the end of the day, we, we can't know for certainty, pretty much these are Roman Caesars and most likely the first being Augustus and then just moving forward. Um, two dot 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 three etc okay the point being is that this is describing the 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 roman the, the the roman setup okay rome is being identified as as the beast okay everyone's tracking there with me rome is being identified as the beast and then one is not yet to come when he does come he must remain for a little while as for the beast who was and is not it is, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven and goes on to destruction. <laughs> and, so, and so again, mo most likely this is, this is involving in some way, um, this description here is involving in some way, this is dealing with in the context of the Roman Empire. We can, we can talk about to the cows come home. We just were not in a situation. I would say that most likely the readers would have easily been able to see what was 
going on and know what was being referred to. I, I think that there's just there's just gray areas that we we can't we can't really know. And I'll come back on how we can apply this. Okay, the 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 ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received power. So this is this is future this is future kings. Okay, rulers. All right. They are to receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. They receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. These are of one mind. So this is another description here. And they hand over their power and authority to the beast. So this is the action. So this is the, this is the, the, Action number two, action number one, action number two. This is how I understand it. Okay. Super confusing. Okay. So, so what, so depending on who you are, let's just write this out really quick. A historical, a histor, a, a historical type, historical preterist person. Preterist means that everything was fulfilled in the first century. What they would say is this is just referring to Rome and, and it was, fulfilled in the first century. A purely futurist dispensational reading, dispensational reading would say, this is purely end of time, right? The, the, the end of time, okay? Some, some apocalyptic kingdom in the distant future, okay? What I've tried to, to, to faithfully interpret is to claim, is to claim my position is that of an uh, idealist, futurist position. And so what I've said is that these events, they occurred in the past, occurring now, and will climax in the future. Okay? And so this, this beast was is not is to come okay and so the beast keeps coming back it's not just the roman empire it's the different empires through the history of civilization obviously post cross that continue to rebel and revolt against the the lamb and against and against god and it's going to climax at the end time and look at the the final battle here they will make war on the lamb and the lamb will conquer them. So this here is, this here, I would say is this is the, the, this is Armageddon. The last battle. And so, but we don't want to dis disregard the, the, the partial fulfillment in the Roman Empire, and the repeated fulfillment throughout history, right? So everyone, you know, for a period of time, the Islamic State, right? The, the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, that was going to be the beast, right? That was the one that was going to rise up and bring, bring Armageddon. The, um, you know, people talk about Russia, people talk about China, people talk about, you know, um, maybe they talk about America. I, I, I don't know. So there's always oh the, the the EU the EU was going to be this new was going to be this new beast okay Nazi Germany was the beast okay Soviet Russia was the beast and so what I would say but, but the problem the, the failure of most people is that they would point to a specific thing and see that's the beast the end of days is here and what I'm saying is that we should interpret this as this is the beast who was who is here for a little bit is not and is to come do you see what I'm saying? The beast keeps coming back until there's a final climax at the end of time, which is sometime in our future when the beast will fight against the lamb and the lamb will conquer the beast. And this is probably my favorite statement in all of scripture. It's top, it's top five. It's top five. It's my favorite song in Christmas time, the Messiah, the hallelujah chorus. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. 
What is the reason for the lamb conquering the beast? He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. There's a, a theologian, John Frame. He says the, the, the biggest theme in all of scripture is the Lordship of God. The biggest theme in all of scripture is the, the Lordship of God. So, and so this is a reference to Armageddon. The lamb is the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. And those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. And so we are, we are with him. <laughs> we are, we are in his presence in this, in this great battle. We are with him chosen and faithful. And so I do think that the, 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 the first mystery that the, the mystery that's being described is number one. So let's just really quickly identify that we can, we can talk about significance here. We're thinking about mystery. The mystery of course is the, fa is, is the identity of the beast. And I would say identity of beast with the, uh, it's coming. So Jesus is the one who was and is and the coming one. Okay. The beast is the one that was, is not, and is to come. It can't, it can't, it can't stay. <laughs> it goes on to destruction. It keeps coming back and goes on to destruction. <laughs> I think that's the image that's going on here. Whereas Jesus is here. He's the big dog. You can't mess with him. The beast keeps coming back. And so for the Christians, this was huge assurance for them with the Roman Empire that it was going to go on to destruction. But the mistake was to say, no, that that's it. That's the end of time. And it's not going to keep happening. And this happens all the time in, in, in Hebrew prophecy and even Jesus' prophecy. There, there's a prophecy that seems to, to point to a near fulfillment and a distant fulfillment. Okay. And so I'll just highlight this for you to be thinking about when you read the prophets, when you read the gospels, Jesus is teaching, even sometimes in Paul and especially in revelation, you'll have a prophecy here and the, the prophecy will be given. This is time. And the prophecy seems to have a, a near fulfillment. Okay. And so it's like, Oh, that prophecy is fulfilling there near this near this near fulfillment and we think like ah it, it's speaking to rome but like but rome has been gone for 17 1700 years or maybe it's not that many maybe it's 1400 years i i i need to work on my history um <laughs> but then but then it's like i think it's speaking to the end of time and so there is this distant fulfillment so all we can see is that first mountain peak, but in fact, it's pointing to this distant and, and both are fulfillments. That's the nature of prophecy. Abraham, right? Abraham was promised a son, Isaac, but that promise was actually fulfilled in, in David and then in Christ, <laughs> So when you think about Abraham's promise, there were partial fulfillments that climaxed in Christ. And so in the same way prophecy here, what I would say is that th there, there was a near fulfillment in Rome, and yet there's, um, there, is a, there is a historical fulfillment along the line, and then there's going to be a climax at the end of time. And, and God has designed prophecy like this so that no one can get complacent. Christians, we're so susceptible to being lazy. <laughs> and so I'll, 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 let's, let's, let's end here. Any comments or reflections or, or what's, what's your reflection upon this? So the beast is trying to duplicate Jesus who is and who is, who was and is to come. Yeah, and they both come, they will meet and they will wage war against each other. Yep. And then Christ will overcome. Yeah. 
By the way, Tim, it's in Revelation 1 8 is what you're looking for for Jesus who was, who is, and come. Yeah, there, that's it. There it is. There it is. Who is, who was, and is to come. It's actually the coming one. It's like, <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says yeah. Lord God, who is, and who was, and who is to come, yeah. the Almighty. In yeah, the meantime, yeah. the beast was from the abyss. He comes out and then go back to the abyss. <laughs> can't stay. He can't stay. He wants to stay, but he can't. My question, Tim, is like yeah. the on Revelation 17 yeah. says that the great prostitute who sits by many waters. But now on verse 9 or verse 8 sits on seven hills or seven mountains. Yeah, so Rome was in a port connected with all the like Mediterranean. So it's like both. So it's really pointing at you, you. This calls for wisdom. I mean, John, John is in exile because probably because of, you know, Rome, like Paul was probably killed by Rome. Jesus was killed by Rome. Right. So the technical, the, 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 the trial and the crucifixion of Jesus was done by Rome in the judicial sense, even though the Jews demanded it was the Roman law that put Jesus to death. And so, yeah, so it's, it's very obvious in the first century that it would be Rome. Yeah. And, and crucifixion is the Roman way. Yes. It's not um, the Jewish way. Yeah. So that's why we can talk about all, you know, what were the, who are the precise kings? When are they going to happen? And, and, and my whole point is like, no, because we can, there's speculation who the kings were. It's, it's the kings from the Roman Empire. It was bringing them, it was bringing the, the Christians at the time comfort that, no, these kings are going to go nuts. Jesus, they're going to fight against Jesus and the lamb's going to kill them all, okay? And I think that's, that's, that's all we take away. And so this keeps happening and again and again. So, so, so the Nazis rose up and then, they, and then they were destroyed. The Soviets rose up and they were destroyed. Pol Pot rose up. Napoleon rose up, right? All these, these, uh, these kings in the, in the history, right? The Moors went through all of Asia and now they're no more, right? And so I think that we shouldn't, we shouldn't say, oh, this is that, it must be the end times. We should say, oh, this is, this is, this is, the, this is the modus operandi of Satan's kingdom Let's remain faithful. The lamb's going to return and he's going to lay the smack down. He's going to lay the smack down smack on these down. rulers. Yeah. 100%. And with that, be encouraged. The lamb is the Lord of lords and the king of kings. And so the, the call of the gospel is repent and trust in the Lord of lords and the king of kings. Because if you don't, there will be no escape. <laughs> Amen. All we got to do is trust. And it's, it, in many ways, it's just it's such a relief. Just be faithful today to what God has called you to. You don't change the world. You be faithful. You protect your family. You worship. You submit your, your, your affections to the Lord. And, and he's going to act.